keep forgetting it. Yeah, we're in progress. All right. Minister Gwen Kane is going to be our preacher for this evening on this Wednesday night prayer line. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and mute the line and get everybody cleared up there. And then, Minister Gwen, if you can unmute yourself, and then we'll be ready to roll here. Okay, Minister Gwen, go right ahead. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an honor to be with you this evening. And I'm going to um, try something, do something a little different tonight. And I'm going to come from uh, Esther chapter 4. And I'm going to read two scriptures, 13 and 14. But I'm going to pray first. Lord, the Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together, Lord, lifting up your holy name. Lord, we just want to give you honor and praise just for who you are. So we thank you this evening for this. I thank you for this opportunity to Heavenly Father and just to bless your name and lift you up on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if you could join with me for uh, the book of Esther and chapter 4. And I'm just going to read two scriptures, 13 and 14. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, do not imagine that you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. Amen. For such a time as this. We all know and have heard about the story of Esther. So I'm just gonna give you a little background. There were perhaps 15 million Jews scattered throughout the Persian empire. Because of Haman's hostility and the king's stupidity, all of them, the Jews, were now appointed to die unless they pulled up states and left the kingdom. But if they did that, where would they go? Even their own land, of Israel wasn't safe. King um, Xerius threw a party prior to his invasion of Greece. The Queen Vestai did not attend as ordered. It cost her the throne and later her life. It brought Esther to the throne for such a time as this. Esther didn't want to go before the king no one knew she was a Jew. Mordecai emphasized that her being in the palace was not an accident, for she had come to royal position for such a time as this. If Esther would just take the time to review her life, she couldn't help but see that there had been divine leading all the way. So here we are. Everything that happens in our life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, has a divine purpose to accomplish in this world. God's purposes involve the, Jew, the Jewish nation as well as the Gentile nation of the world. They also involve the church. God deals with individuals as well as with nations. His purpose touch the lives of kings, queens, and common people, godly people, and wicked people. There is nothing in this world that is outside the influence of the purposes of God. Well, when we came to Christ by obeying the gospel, either by word or by deed, we made a promise to live by the word, the will, and the wisdom of God. But many of us have gotten so far away from that promise. So I thought it might be helpful for me to remind you, remind myself that a promise is a promise. I don't know about you, 
But God has promised us some things, and I believe in the promise he has made. God has promised to be a friend and to pick us up when men and women have knocked us down. God has promised to be our strength and open closed doors that no man can shut. God has promised to be with us and no wise will he forsake us. Have God ever forsaken you? God has promised the storms will not overtake us and the fires will not overwhelm us. I know that his word is true, his motives are pure, his law is just and his ways are right. I know that God's heart is kind, his grace is sufficient, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I know that his mercy is great, his peace is perfect, his promises are sure and his power is unlimited because a promise is a promise. For such a time as this, here they come. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 12 and 14, King James Version, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer prosecution, but evil men and, and uh, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So here they come. Who am I speaking of? The Hamans of the Bible, the haters of the gospel, falsely accusing the saints, taking control, political lies, violence, drunken, drunkenness, etc. Seems like trouble. God will show up when, when in times of trouble. You may have been abused or misused. Perhaps all those you trusted have turned on you and broken your heart. Still, God has sustained you. Yes, here they come, the Hamans of this world. When we become comfortable in our sins, comfortable with the injustice we see or experience, comfortable with homelessness, seems like trouble is brewing, but God will show up in times of trouble. Esther was in trouble and we are living in a world that has gone mad. Yes, we are living in trouble. Throughout history, there were people prosecuted, enslaved and stripped of their rights of human beings because of faith race, lifestyle, among other things. Have, you, have we ever compromised sharing the gospel because of the trouble that it may bring? Yes, sometimes we don't tell someone of the gospel because we may uh, want, don't want someone else to persecute us or, or say something bad about us, but praise the Lord. God will not deny us because of our past. Ask the Lord today to open the prison doors of, our, of your own soul and set you free from any injustice, injustice that may have affected someone. For such a time as this, here we stand. It does not take long to realize that life is filled with challenges and victories smiles and tears, many friends and family, but none will ever take the place of our Lord. His place in your life is the foundation for which we stand. He is our foundation for which we stand. The Lord Jesus will be there in every moment of pain and glory. It is God's tender love for us that keeps our mind from breaking under the stress of life. And when all is said and done, no one, no one can comfort you or hold you like the Lord Jesus. Here we stand, 
prosperous in our businesses, secure in our relationship, confident in who we are, but it is all because of Jesus saving our souls. Knowing Jesus gives us the grace to endure transitions, to withstand oppositions, and take a stand for such a time as this. We who know Jesus, we will hear him say, servant of God, well done. The battle has been fought and the victory has been won. When we shall look upon his thorn crowd brow, when we see the nail prints in his hands, when we see the spears marks in his side, when we see the spike marks in his feet, when we see the King of Kings in the beauty of his holiness and in the holiness of his beauty, we will understand then like we cannot understand it now. But right now we only see through a glass. But when we come face to face with Jesus, it will all be clear to us then. When we come face to face with the Lord, every shadow will have passed away and every whisper will be louder. We then can thank him for every dark night, thank him for every lonely way, thank him for every tear, thank him for every trial. Here we stand for such a time as this, praying for each other daily that someone will accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They will love and worship him because no one can ever speak to your spirit or heal your heart like the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Minister Gwen. Amen. Praise the Lord for the word of God coming. To, and the, the, the challenge that we all face, every, we all face it every day. Uh, standing Amen. up for the Lord, standing up for what's right, standing up for the word of God uh, and having the courage to do so. Praise God for the message tonight uh, that Minister Gwen Kane has brought to us. I'm going to lead us in prayer and then we'll close out tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, thank you for the word that has come to us and for this, this scripture, Lord, about Esther uh, and, and for such a time as this and for the, the challenge that comes forth, Lord, uh, from Minister Gwen tonight. Thank you for inspiring her. Thank you for uh, getting her prepared for this. And for the presentation as it has been made, Lord, may the word of God dwell richly in our hearts. May you speak continuously through us, Lord, every day uh, as we go through uh, the rest of this week, Lord, and, and every week thereafter. May we be mindful that this may be the time that you've called us to take a stand for Jesus. Uh, and that we might be a blessing to those who hear the word of God through us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. God bless everybody on the prayer line. We'll see you All tomorrow right. morning with Dr. J at 8 a.m. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Amen. 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 Amen.